welcome all my dear friends as we are continuing with the new series that is case studies so let us so uh, let us first of all define what a case study is so literally we can say that a case study is a detailed study of a specific subject such as a person group place event organization or phenomenon fine case studies are commonly used in social educational clinical and business research fine but here uh, we focus more here we focus more on the aspects facts issues decisions taken etc etc when the two parties or we can say when two parties are opposing each other on some conflicts in the world of patents fine so um, let us dig a little deeper by going into some specific cases fine okay wow so with this beautiful figure let us proceed with the detailed one fine so friends today we will proceed with case study number 4 and today we will go into deeper of the case study that is sagun organics limited versus gaur hari gochai fine so let us proceed now we will go through some facts okay sagun organics limited had filed for a suit seeking a permanent injunction to restrain the defendants from infringing its process patent fine that means sagun organics limited the company it uh it bears a or we can say it had a process patent okay so uh, in a way we can say this is the plaintiff okay and it had filed for a suit seeking a permanent injunction okay a kind of stay we can say okay why to restrain for what to restrain the defendants from infringing its process patent fine okay let us proceed now some more facts the patent relates to that means the process patent that we were we were talking about relates to the manufacturing of d trans alethrin d trans alethrin okay which is an active ingredient in mosquito repellents got it okay let us proceed now sagun had also obtained an original registration for the manufacture of this product under the insecticides act 1968 okay just uh, just listen carefully friends here though sagun had a process patent already it it had we can say it had an added advantage that it has obtained an original registration for the manufacture of this product under the insecticides act 1968 fine okay now what is the issue whether the plaintiff's patent is pre published and lacks novelty in view of the registration d trans alethrin granted to the plaintiff or we can just summarize the issue into two parts okay the first part is registration under the insecticides act would constitute as prior publication or not okay and the second point is whether the defendants have infringed plaintiff's patent or not so we can just summarize the issue into two parts and so by keeping these two points in, in mind we can proceed okay now what is the dilemma there is a dilemma the dilemma before the high court of delhi was that just because an earlier registration under the insecticides act 1968 was in favor of the plaintiff and later the defendant it does not imply that the patented process was disclosed okay the dilemma 
for the Delhi High Court was is the plaintiff has an earlier registration under the Insecticides Act. Okay, that means as the issue was like whether it is pre-published and lacking the nobility, these things. Just try to relate these trends. So, the dilemma before the High Court of Delhi was just because an earlier registration under the Insecticides Act was in favor of the plaintiff and later the defendant, it does not, okay, that means we can say it was in favor of the plaintiff first and in favor of the defendant later. And thus, this thing actually does not imply a clear cut thing that the patented process was disclosed. Something is not very crystal clear we can say. Something is not clear. Okay, that's why there is a dilemma. It is also seen that the defendant was unable to exhibit that the patent process steps were previously disclosed. Also what happened? Now the defendant was unable to exhibit that the patent process steps were previously disclosed. Okay, so uh, we can say that uh, uh, it is a uh, negative point for the defendant also. Fine. Okay, let us proceed. Now, what the what decision the court gave? Okay, so uh, just take a look here. The court took note of the language of section 30 of the Patent Act, which lays down that the invention described in the specification can be deemed to constitute prior specification by way of this communication of the invention to the government or any such person authorized. Okay. Now, in order to constitute a disclosure of the invention in question, there must be public manufacturer, user, sell of the same. Fine. So, please refer section 30, that is, the title is Anticipation by Previous Communication to Government that we already had discussed okay so the court the court uh, took the help of the language of section 30 okay let us see what happens now the court held that the plaintiff is entitled to a permanent injunction restraining defendants from the manufacturing and sale of the trans okay and it is observed that there was no substantial evidence by the defendant to rebute the plaintiff's case of infringement. Okay. It is also observed that there was no substantial evidence by the defendant to rebut the plaintiff's case of in infringement. Fine. Now we can proceed towards the final decision. Okay. So we can say that additionally it was held uh, that any disclosure of a patent with a novel process would not be constituted by an analysis of the patent process but would rather discuss the prior art and emphasize the advantages of the inventive steps brought to the table and disclose the exact process sought to be patented. That means, uh, is a conclusion we can say here that uh, the disclosure of a patent with a noble process, it is it should not be constituted by an analysis of the patent process, but rather by discussion of the prior art and giving by, and by giving emphasis on the advantages of the inventive steps that are brought to the table. Fine. And the disclosure of the process is different from an external analysis of the process as to how it is noble and inventive. It should be also kept in mind. So, as a whole or as a conclusion, we can say here that the Honorable High Court after analyzing Section 30 of the Patents Act 1970 and partial of certain relevant judgments held that Disclosure to a government department or, or to any other authority, not just of the patentee, but by any other person would not constitute prior publication. Okay. Uh, so, friends, please go through each and every slide of this video lecture. And if you are getting stuck anywhere, please write to me in my comment box. Okay, friends. Happy learning. So, friends, enrich your brain cell with proper food and proper knowledge. So, thank you all, my dear friends, for listening to me and watching my video. Please like, share and subscribe my channel.
please keep questioning please keep learning and keep enjoying thank you so much god bless you jai hind